Welcome back to the Aussie Shed. If you've watched the previous episode, you'll know that uh, I'm making a new foot plate for the tailstock of the Chinese mini lathe. I showed a few bits and pieces of it as I was doing work on the saddle, but uh, I thought I'd do a full video on it. So this is the new foot plate. This is the old foot plate. In the upcoming video, you'll see the steps I went through to make it and how it's set up and the benefits to it. So sit back, relax, grab a beer and check it out. Thanks for watching. at this point all I've done is taken a millimeter out of the depth across here it, uh, it's just a clearance cut it doesn't have to be anything fancy I'll just turn it off so this is what I was just working on over on the uh, on drill this is the new foot plate for the tailstock and this is the old foot plate for the tail stock. A couple of things you may notice. It's substantially larger. You can see the original runs on this, runs along the outside edge, and it is really terrible. So it basically runs along this point here. It doesn't go across full width. It only has a very light engagement on the on the back rail there. And I've machined it down here to get it flatter, but it's still not ex it's still not completely flat. So yeah, that's, that's so you can see the new piece here that I'm making up. It actually runs completely level now. I've checked it with a depth indicator on both sides across here, and it's actually running quite flat. You know, this is great. The full cover it'll run smoothly along this edge and run along on that V. The extra length in this direction allows me to um, fit a a lock. An extra lock down in here so all I've got left to do with this basically is uh, cut another piece of flat bar um, I've got various bits sitting around you know put something on there obviously it's got to be thicker and and taller than that and I'll bolt that up through from underneath and then possibly mill it um, to form this section in the center here and that'll give me that piece you can see there's two grooves in this there's a main groove along here and then there's this very technical groove along the side that groove along the side there that's called a fuck up that's what happens when you're not paying attention to what you're doing and you're all excited and you start to hurry which is basically what happened to me i mounted it 90 degrees out in the vise started to cut it and went uh oh the light came on so i only got as far as uh, running an end mill down just to clear out a lot of the the material first before I put the uh, the 90 degree cutter in there and went oh no that's around the wrong way but that doesn't matter it won't cause any problems there'll be a hole drilled probably through the center of it here for a locking mechanism um, so that's not really a problem it's just more of an embarrassment because I've buggered it up and I don't have another piece I can use uh, if I had another piece I'd possibly make a new one but then again maybe I wouldn't because it doesn't really matter that much come to think of it as soon as I have this funky chamfering end mill I might uh, chamfer the edges of the new foot plate because the uh, the tail stock doesn't run up against the edges so there's no reason why there can't be a bit of a chamfer just to give that really smick finish to it okie dokie here we go
there we go. That looks a bit tidier. Bit of edge work. Fantastic. Alrighty, time to finish lapping in the new foot plate for the tail stock. So here we go. You can see the lapping pattern. As the lapping's getting closer and closer, you can see this area here hasn't been reached by the new pattern from the paper that's on the top of the lathe bed. You can see it's uh, it's almost over most of the area. This was pretty flat when I started, and the uh, the V groove that I cut in is not too bad as well. It only needs a little bit more. I haven't spent a lot of time on this. Maybe 10 minutes. There's a couple of rough marks along the top, but it's looking pretty. It's looking pretty sweet. So I'll keep going. I'll keep going until that um, that little piece there is gone, and we're flat right across. Groove's already pretty good, but I'll keep going with that too. I'm just using a little wire brush to clean the paper with it. I can't use um, WD, I could be ideal if I could put a bit of a lubricant on this to help with the cutting, but unfortunately the, uh, the shitty spray glue I'm using, you've only got to look at it with something that's uh, got a bit of an oil base or anything to it and it just comes off as you probably saw earlier. I, um, when I was doing some work on the saddle, I gave it a little bit of a spray and it, it, it just came completely off. So uh, this is working out okay. It's only fairly fine paper. I think it's about um, maybe 240 that I'm using here. Being that it's only the, the tail stock foot plate. thing I find very handy, this is a, uh, a magnetic base off one of my um, indicator stands. If you're trying to hold on to something that's steel and quite flat, even when I'm using, when I'm um, finishing flat plate off on a, um, on a belt finisher and stuff, I'll often take one of, the, uh, one of the stands off and just use the magnetic base. And they're very powerful. And they can quite easily hold something like this on a, on a belt finisher or, or whatever you're using just to give you a bit better grip on it rather than trying to hold something on your fingertips that you don't have a really good uh, good grasp of. They're, um, I, I use them all the time. I find them very useful. As you can see, that just gives me a lot better hold of this. It wasn't too bad at the start, but my fingers are getting sore. And now I can actually push down quite hard and uh, probably get a bit more bang for my buck out of my sanding than I was previously. You can see we're getting there. Just there on that end. That's our last little bit everywhere else. Getting pretty sweet. Even those, those marks that were up here are pretty much gone. 
Your Geelong here is looking really nice. Trying very hard not to rock this as I'm transitioning from backwards to forwards. Trying to keep it as flat as possible for obvious reasons. So there we go. I would pretty much call that done. I don't know if you can see there is a tiny little piece. Right there. It's nothing to worry about though. It hasn't been touched yet. Everywhere else is looking really good on the new stock foot plate. So there you go. That is looking sweet. Done and dusted. So as far as I can see, the last thing that really needs to be addressed on the tailstock for the Chinese mini lathe now that the foot plate is pretty much finished is that I need to drop it down about half a millimetre and it gives me the perfect opportunity to clean up this uh, this bottom section of the tailstock, which if you remember from the previous video is very uneven. Um, I can just kill two birds with one stone, drop it down and, and tidy that up. So I'll, just, uh, I'll just mount it up in the in the kangaroo mill and take uh, take a millimetre off it maybe. I'll work it out, see how much it needs and uh, I'll go from there. I'll take 0.6 and see we've got I've, I've got I've got about 0.7 between this face here and the top of the new foot plate. Um, so I'll take 0.6 off it. That'll still give me a, a tiny little bit of clearance in here and I'll have a look if it's enough to get me down to where the rough center line of the um, of the chuck is on the lathe. And uh, if it's not, I'll just take a slight bit more out of here and I'll, um, I'll recap. Throw a bit of lube on there. It's always good to have a bit of lube, eh, gentlemen? Here we go. There we have it. So that's our point six. So the finish isn't too bad. With just some crappy converted drill press. We'll go and test it out and see how it works. Let's mount him back up and see how it goes. See how we went. Alright. That's looking pretty pretty damn good now. We appear to be uh, we appear to be slightly low, maybe 0.25. But that was the whole idea was to end up slightly low so that we can just shim. It gives it gives us room to be able to shim it. If it's high, there's nothing we can do other than cut more off. But once it's a little bit low, it means we can then shim to get it absolutely perfect, which is uh, it, it's pretty damn close, but. Um, once the chuck's on and we really get this exactly set up correctly, um, that'll be spot on. So that's about it, I think. That's the um, the new tailstock footplate completed. 
So that is pretty damn good. So what needs now is a bit of paint. Just another quick little job while I've got the oil stock apart. I've got these oil ports. You can buy a bag of 20 of them on eBay for like a dollar. You just drill a six mil hole and tap them in. Uh, I thought I might just throw one in the tail stock while it's in this position. Uh, just so that I don't have to pull it apart to lubricate the spindle. Um, relatively simple. I'll just drill a six mil hole, tap it in and I think that's pretty much the last thing that needs to be done to it. Unfortunately, fitting the oiler port didn't work out as simple as I first thought it would be. The little oilers are actually too long. To fit in this distance here, you can see it just it's just slightly proud of um sitting correctly in there so I thought well no worries I'll just grind a little bit off the end of the oiler yeah it didn't work out so easy there's a spring inside that retains the ball and it's uh, the end of the the uh, the brass is folded over and as soon as you just slightly touch it onto anything to sort of grind that down it all just turns to crap it's I tried a few times to shorten one of these but um, and then recrimp it and all sorts of stuff. No, nah, nothing worked. I found a fairly simple solution. And that was to, uh, where I drilled a six mil hole in here, just drill it out for an eight mil bolt and uh, cut down, tap it out for an eight mil bolt, cut down an eight mil socket head stainless bolt, and then just fit the, the oiler fitting into the cap of the socket head bolt quite simple still and uh, it doesn't look too bad it's a little bit a little bit bulky looking I was hoping for something that was a bit more stealth but it doesn't interfere with anything it sort of you know does the job gets me an oiler port which is all I wanted really so yeah nothing's ever really simple is it guys